from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Friday, April the 12th, 2024. Amid threats from Iran, Israel's chief of staff, Major General Herzi Halevi today, together with visiting U.S. Central Command, CENTCOM Commander General Michael Eric Kurilla, completed a comprehensive situational assessment with IDF officials on the IDF's readiness for defensive and offensive operations in all scenarios. Halevi saying the IDF continues to monitor closely what is happening in Iran and different arenas, constantly preparing to deal with existing and potential threats in coordination with the United States Armed Forces. IDF spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari echoed Halevi's words, telling the press last night, we are prepared and ready in offense and defense with a variety of capabilities of the IDF and also prepared with our strategic partners. Hagari said our strategic relationship with the United States military is firm and steadfast. This has been manifest since the beginning of the war and continues to be seen in our actions. General Kurilla, who arrived in Israel yesterday, also met with Israel's Defense Minister, Yoav Gallant, who said the U.S. and Israel's defense establishments and militaries stand shoulder to shoulder. Gallant saying the world sees the true face of Iran, which supports and funds terror proxies across the Middle East and now threatens to attack Israel. Gallant also spoke with U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, where he said he emphasized that the state of Israel will not tolerate an Iranian attack on its territory. The IDF continues its ground operation against terror group Hamas in Gaza, meanwhile destroying terrorist infrastructure and eliminating terrorists, including, the IDF said last night, taking out the head of internal security in the Jabalia area of Gaza, saying the Hamas operative also served in the organization's military arm. Also eliminating the head of the Hamas terrorist infrastructure in the area of Tubas, a central Hamas operative, the IDF said, who has been involved in the promotion of significant terrorist acts against Israel in recent months. And defending Israel's border with Lebanon as terror group Hezbollah continues to fire rockets at northern Israel throughout the day today. The IDF said fighter jets recently attacked military buildings of the Hezbollah terrorist organization where terrorists were staying. The U.S. Treasury has sanctioned several senior Hamas officials in the terror group's drone unit. The Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control said today that it is taking action against Hamas, targeting Gaza and Lebanon-based leaders of the terrorist group's offensive cyber and unmanned aerial vehicle operations. Under Secretary of the Treasury for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, Brian Nelson, said today's joint action reinforces our continued collective focus on disrupting Hamas's ability to conduct further attacks, including through cyber warfare and the production of UAVs. The Council of the European Union also issued sanctions today against Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, naming the Al-Quds Brigades, the Nakba Force and the Qassam Brigades, saying these three entities committed widespread sexual and gender-based violence during the brutal and indiscriminate terrorist attacks that occurred across Israel on October the 7th. The Anti-Defamation League released its first ever campus anti-Semitism report card yesterday, a tool CEO Jonathan Greenblatt said to evaluate anti-Semitism on campus and help families make informed decisions when committing to a college. Among those schools who received a failing grade, Harvard, MIT, Princeton, and Stanford, only two schools received A's. They are Brandeis and Elon University. Well, the Jewish holiday of Passover, which celebrates the Jewish people's release from bondage to freedom, is fast approaching. And the Hostages and Missing Families Forum announced a special Haggadah to honor and keep in our minds those who are not free. The 133 hostages being held now in Gaza for 189 days. 
This Haggadah was produced by Be'eri Print in Kibbutz Be'eri, one of the kibbutzim that was ravaged on October the 7th. It includes inspiring messages from former Chief Rabbi of Israel, Rabbi Yisrael Lau, bereaved IDF mother Miriam Peretz, Israeli singer Rita, and more. All proceeds donated to the Forum. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Friday, April the 12th. Live Shabbat services are coming up at 6 o'clock from New York City's Central Synagogue, followed by Shabbat services from the Hampton Synagogue. At 8.30, Justin Pines sits down with Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak Jacobson about what he learned from the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He also talks about insights on the world since October the 7th and the approaching holiday of Passover. That's followed by Jewish 101. At 10.30, a replay from the Hampton Synagogue, followed by a replay from Central. And coming up next, a look at this week's Torah portion. And that's the JBS News Update for Friday, April the 12th, 2024. I'm Tisha Bader wishing you a Shabbat Shalom. Am Yisrael Chai.